Okay, this is day two of unit nine, and today we're going to be looking at what kind of data um, do we need to find the differential rate law. So differential rate laws, those are what we were working with yesterday. And so today we're going to look to see, well, how do they get that from the data? And what this is called, or this process we're doing, it's called the method of initial rate. And what that means is that we look at, we collect the data on the rate at the very beginning of the experiment. And, and it's, the timing is such that we try to, to uh, do it before then a significant significant change in the concentration of the reactants. So if you remember back yesterday, we were looking at the graph and how at at the beginning of a graph ver where we're sh showing concentration versus time, that it you know that it does appear to be rather linear if we do it at the very beginning, and so that's kind of what this is taking advantage of, and the type of data that you'll see and the way you know that we're going to be working with differential rate laws is that we're going to have concentrations and rates. That that's going to be the uh, the type of data that we get. And what we're looking for is we're looking to compare the change in one reactant to how it affects the change in the rate, which means we're going to be looking for experiments where we are changing one thing and holding something else constant. So let's look at here, for example. So we know that based on the form of our rate law, that for this, we're going to have rate equals K, and then it's going to have um, carbon monoxide, that's one of our reactants, raised to some power, we'll just call it N, and then chlorine raised to some power, we'll use the letter M for that, okay? So this is our rate law in general form. And so now we just want to take a look. So if we look at, we want to determine the effect of the carbon monoxide. So I'm looking for two experiments where the carbon monoxide is changing, but the chlorine is not. And so in this case, Experiment one and experiment two meet those criteria. So if I look at, when I go from one to two, all right, I am doubling the concentration of the carbon monoxide. And when I compare the change in the rate, it is also doubled. So that tells me that my carbon monoxide is first order, okay? Same thing. Double the concentration and it doubles the rate. That means it's first order. So now to look at the chlorine, I need to compare two experiments where I'm holding the carbon monoxide constant. So that means I'm going to look at experiment one and experiment three because I'm changing the chlorine, all right? And so if I look at those two, I am doubling the chlorine. And then if I compare one to three there, it's times four. So that means that it is second order in the chlorine. So my rate equals, so there's my rate equation. And then to find the K value, because that's the, the other thing it asked us to do, was to find the value of the rate constant. I am going to pick, I'm just going to pick one of them and plug in the values and solve for K. Now, if you were doing this with experimental data, normally what you would do is you, for every experiment, you would plug in solve for K and then you would take the average of it. But we're just going to like pick one of them and plug in. So I'm going to just use experiment one. So here is my equation. Again, I'm going to start out just writing that. OK. 
Okay, and so now from experiment one, my rate is 0.121, and the carbon monoxide was 0.12, and the chlorine was 0.2 squared. And so I have 0.121, and we're going to divide by 0.12 times 0.2 squared. And so that gives me a K value of 25.2. And again, remember we said put in our units. So I have molarity cubed. So I'm going to have M to the minus 2 and it's per second. So it's S to the minus 1. So that would be my K value in my unit. Okay. All right, so let's look at this one here. All right, so again, my generic equation, rate equals K, and then I have ICL and H2, and say, well, it's going to go to the M and the N. Okay, so now let's see. We've got to look to compare my ICL. Um, experiments one and two will work because I'm holding the hydrogen constant. So here I've got so times two, and when I look at that, times two. So it's going to be first order in the ICL. And then to compare for the H2, I can use experiment two and experiment three. And so for that one, two to three, there is times three. And two to three there, let's see, what do we got? I think it's a times three, but let me double check. 2.2, 2, 10 to the negative six, divided by 7.4, the negative seven, yeah, so that comes out to be about a times three. So it's going to be also first order in the hydrogen. So we're going to find our K value. So I'm going to rewrite it over here, rate equals K, L, H2. And so I'm just again going to use experiment one. So 3.7 times 10 to the minus 7, and then solving for k, and I have 1.5 and 1.5, and so my k value is 3.7 10 to the negative 7 divided by, and I'm getting that k is 1.64 times 10 the minus 7, that's going to be molarity to the minus 1, seconds to the minus 1. And then it asks us to find out what is the value for the rate in the last, in experiment number 4. So let's just, I'm going to move up here and do that. So again, I have rate equals K, I, C, L, and H2. So I'm solving for my rate. My K is 1.64 times 10 to the minus 7th. And uh, it's 4.7 and 2.7. Okay, so that's going to be equal to 1.64, 10 to the negative 7, and then times 4.7 and times 2.7. And so that gives me 2.08 times 10 to the negative 6 meter or molarity per second. So that would be what we would plug in to right there. That would be that value. Okay. All right. So let's see. Here we've got. Um, okay, kind of a similar situation here. 
All right, so looking at this one, so again, I have generic rate expression is going to be uh, NO2 to some power and O3 to some power there. Okay, so for the NO2, I'm going to use 1 and 3. All right, so all right, so 1 to 3. All right, so let's see. I have 0.38 divided by 0 0.21. Okay, so that looks like times 1.8. Okay, and then looking at the rate here, I have 11.4 divided by 6.3, and that's times 1.8. So that's going to be first order, so K in O2. And then for the O3, I'm going to use 1 and 2 for O3. Let me go back and highlight that. And so here, 1 and 2, I have 0.7 to 1.39, which is approximately a times 2. And then here, I have 6.3 to 2.5, which is again approximately a times 2. So that's going to be first order in that one. So again, I'm going to use my experiment one to find my k value in O2, O3. So 6.3 is k times 0.21 times 0.7. So 6.3. So I'm getting a K of 42.9, and again, that's going to be molarity to minus 1, seconds to minus 1. And for experiment 4, if I plug in that value, so I rate, just for number 4, rate equals 42.9, and then times 0.66, and times 0.18. Um, so the rate there, 42.9 times, so I'm getting about 5.10 molarity per second, and again that would be this value right there, this in there. Alright, and then this is where our next lesson will begin. Okay, so now I have some extra practice that we're, we're going to do in class. So let's just work through these. All right. So here I have compounds A and B to yield C. And so now I've got, all right, so for A, to find A, I'm going to do 1 and 2. So there. Um, there to there is times 2, and there to there times 2. So it's going to be first order in A, the rate equals K, first order in A. And then for B, I'm looking at 1 and 3, and we have 1 to 3 is a times 2, and then 1 to 3 in the rate is a times 4. So it's going to be second order in B. And determine the rate constant. So I'm just going to go with experiment 1. So 4 times 10 to the minus 3 is K.05, uh, sorry, 0 0.05 and 0 0.05. So K is equal to 4, 10 to the negative 3 divided by that. So I'm getting that k is 
And again, that would be molarity to the minus 1, seconds to the minus 1. Okay, now let's take a look at this one. All right, so again, my generics, rate law, it's going to be rate equals K, and then BF3 to some variable, and NH3 to some other variable. So, all right, let's look and see. So I can use, I have several choices. So let's look at 3 to 4 to evaluate BF3. So I have 0.35 divided by 0.2. So this is a so times 1.75. And if I go there to there, 0 0.1666 divided by 0.0544. And that is a times 3, which if I do 1.75 squared, I get around 3. So it is second order in BF3. And then let's look for NH3. Um, I can use 1 and 2. All right, so I am from 1 to 2, I'm cutting it in half. And here, from 1 to 2, if I do 0.1065 divided by 0.213, it is cutting it in half. So it's going to be first order in the NH3. So the overall order is 2 plus 1, so it's 3. And then the value of the rate constant, I'm just going to use experiment 1. So I have 0 0.2130, that's going to equal K, and then I have 0.25 for the BF3 and 0.25 for the ammonia. So my K is going to equal 0.213 divided by that is going to give me 3.408 and molarity to the minus 1. No, no. Oh, wait. There you go. Look what I did. Go back. Hopefully you caught my mistake before I did. Okay, what did I forget? Well, I forgot to square that because it's squared in my rate law. So let's try that again. 0.213 and then divided by 0.25 squared and 0.25. There we go. All right. So that means I've got K is going to be 13.6 and I have molarity cubed. So my units are molarity to the minus 2, S to the minus 1. Okay, so hopefully with these examples, you will be able to do the method of initial rate.